Love it or hate it. That's the vibe I'm picking up across social media this weekend as we finally got our hands on the Black Ops 6 Early Access Beta. First off, let's dive into what I'm loving about this game so far, then we'll move on to the areas that still need some work. By the end of this video, you should have a pretty balanced view of what to expect. Alright, let's talk about Omni Movement. This is probably going to be the most polarizing feature in this year's title. Personally, I'm really enjoying it. It adds depth and options to the gameplay loop, giving you the flexibility to pull off some flashy moves. But don't worry, if you're not into it, you can still dominate your lobbies without heavily relying on this new mechanic. It's not a must for success, but it does add a layer of skill and creativity for those who want to experiment. That said, Omni movement isn't perfect. There are definitely some drawbacks, especially when diving around corners head on at an enemy. But overall, it's a welcome addition that I think most players will come to appreciate. Now onto the weapons. The overall feel of gunfights is top notch. Visual recoil is minimal, making it easy to keep your aim steady. The time to kill feels balanced and slightly faster than what we came to expect with Cold War. And whether you're using an assault rifle or an SMG, it all feels consistent. They've more or less done away with the damage multipliers, which helps with consistency and overall is a big win for me. Even with the limited selection in this beta, each weapon feels unique. A classic Black Ops touch. It's refreshing to see each gun have its own character. Let's talk about the maps. We've only got access to four right now, but I'm really liking the themes and layouts. They're not too big or small, and they follow the classic three lane design, which is always a plus. Each map has its own vibe, so it doesn't feel repetitive. For art style, now I realise this won't be to everyone's taste, and I normally much prefer Infinity Ward's gritty, realistic vibe compared to Black Ops or Treyarch games. They're typically a lot more arcadey, but I feel this has the perfect mix between the two. It has nice colours that pop in some areas, the character and weapon models are all very good, and so is the lighting. No more squinting to see enemies in dark corners. Another highlight is the revamped creator class system. It's more streamlined and I love that most attachments now come with pros, no cons. Of course, we'll see how this holds up in the full game, but so far, I'm impressed. On the audio side, I'm actually surprised by how well the default footstep audio is balanced. Footsteps are noticeable without being obnoxiously loud, which is a welcome change. This should help too with perk variety, no more feeling forced to run ninja in every match, unless of course you're playing search and destroy when it's pretty much the obvious choice. And now I'm just going to quickly run off a few more things that I'm really enjoying. The UI has seen some great quality of life improvements, especially in the creator class menu. No more endless horizontal scrolling, the vertical menu being back is a huge win. And it's early days, but the best play system at the end of the game is actually shown really good highlights, rather than just some random sniper sat in a bush getting a double kill. You will actually see people getting 5, 6, sometimes even 7 kills in a really, really good clip. Another feature I'm loving is the new auto lean they added, which can really make it feel more immersive. This is a feature that happens as you approach a corner while aimed down sight and based off your movement speed as you approach a corner. It doesn't slow you down and it doesn't add any recoil or throw your aim off at all. It just feels really natural and fairly subtle. And finally, the after action report is packed with useful stats and medals making it more satisfying to see how you performed after each match. Alright, enough of the good stuff. Let's get into some things that I think need work. And starting off, Omni Movement. Like I said at the top of the video, in general, I really like Omni Movement and the level of depth it adds to the gameplay. However, there's definitely some visual aspects that are a little jarring right now, especially when trying to get used to it anyway. It may very well be something that I look back on and think, oh my god, look how bad my movement was there. There's definitely a learning curve to it. Another point with the movement is the new supine prone system they have, where you can lie on your back and basically barrel roll in the mud in any direction. But I'm finding it incredibly hard to spot people in this position. Now this may just be an animation issue that my brain isn't used to right now as over the last 15 plus years I've grown used to seeing the prone animation not really change at all. So this may be another thing that fades away over time once I get used to it. But as of right now I've definitely been caught out a few times with people just laying on the back in the dirt. Now the last part about movement is probably more of a concern than an actual bad negative at this stage. I'm also concerned about potential exploits with the movement system, especially in third person mode. We saw some crazy and weird things at the COD Next event recently, and I wouldn't be surprised if more issues crop up as players get creative in private matches and the player base grows in general. Now away from Omni movement and onto Tactical Sprint. I've changed my settings so there shouldn't be any delay, but the actual sprint itself feels a lot slower and clunky compared to even in last year's Modern Warfare 3. This may be because I haven't unlocked the right perks to help with this yet, all the character animations are different and I have to get used to it, but it definitely feels a lot slower in that regard than what we've gotten used to. But it begs the question, 
Do we even need tactical sprint in this game anymore when there's almost no real difference between a normal sprint and tax sprint? Just have one sprint setting across the board for everyone at all times. You're either sprinting or you're not sprinting. And I think this would help simplify things with the new movement, especially as there are so many new settings to go through if you really want to dial in on every aspect of your game. Now, of course, it wouldn't be beta or the start of a new Call of Duty game if we didn't speak about the spawn system. This is something we always have an issue with as the player base opens up during betas. But again, the spawn system is really bad as of right now. And there have been multiple instances in every game where you either spawn with the enemy team or they spawn behind you and you die instantly. And overall, in general, the flow of spawns and trying to predict where the enemy will spawn has been incredibly hard to predict for me. But again, this may just be that I need more time under my belt and learning how the maps play. Next up, something I've noticed so far for my playtime in general is the connection quality and the consistency of my ping from one game to the next. One game I have 30 ping, the next 50, all that's 150 and then back down to 30 and 50 again. Of course, this is just a beta and it has just gone live and maybe more players than anticipated have been playing and it is in closed early access format. So maybe not so many people in my region are playing at the times that I do. I normally play early mornings or late in the evening, so that could be a case. Alongside the connection issues, there definitely seems to be some discrepancies between me killing an enemy and being killed by one. And what I mean by that is there have been numerous times where I'm sure I've bitten the four or five bullets required to get a kill, sometimes even more, only ends up to being dead myself. A while before I did say the TTK seems to be consistent and I still stand by that point. I think this is very much down to connection problem and desync in particular. And that probably could also be down to the constant disbanding of lobbies. When you finally get a good lobby with a good connection, perform well, you almost certainly know that the next game you'll be with a new set of players and have worse ping. But of course, that all comes down to the matchmaking system that we've had for years now and that they've said they definitely will not be changing in any time soon. And lastly, the score streak cost to me feel a bit steep. 675 points for a UAV, that's a lot. And it seems like maybe they're trying to push the new scout pulse instead, but I'm not sure that's the right move. And while this new version of the Predator Mist or the Hellstorm is cool and reasonably good, I think 1200 score for one is a bit steep in my opinion. So those are my main impressions from the Black Ops 6 beta. Despite some nitpicky negatives, I'm having a blast. And this is shaping up to be one of the best Call of Duty experiences in recent years. But what about you? Have you been playing? What do you think of the new movement system? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a like is always appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day.